All right, so I'm over at my buddy Wayne's house. This is Wayne. So hey, Wayne. And uh, this is his two-car garage shop, and it's basically the same size as mine. Very similar tool setup, but as you'll see in just a minute on the other side of this outfit table, he's got an absolute ton more space than I do. Uh, probably because some th way some things are laid out, but just to uh, walk you through real quick, uh, I'm gonna go around this way and then cover the stuff in the middle. But he's got a uh, oscillating spindle sander slash belt sander. Do you use that often? I do. I used you do? It yesterday, yeah. I've got a spindle sander, not a belt sander, but a spindle sander, and I've used it one time. I just roll it right outside. Roll Dust it out. Selection on it is horrible, so I just roll it right outside. Yeah, roll it outside and use it. And then this is a this is actually the filter from my dust collector. I upgraded mine to the HEPA filter and this is going to be a little bit better filtration obviously than one of these bags. So he's gonna upgrade his to uh, make a plate and all that stuff to use it. And his lumber rack, which you said you don't like. That's uh, yeah. Vertical storage is the way to go. Of course, I don't have much uh, lumber right now, but you know, I have a hardwood deal about 20 minutes from here. Of course, both big box stores are about 10 minutes from here. So. Yeah, I my lumber rack is handy but it, it, it's handy to catch crap. So vertical storage, I'm kind of leaning towards as well, but I don't have enough space to change mine right now. So we agree with that, uh, we agree on there, but but just as a as a future reference here, see a lumber rack with nice hardwood edge banding. What is this hardwood you got going on here? Oak. Oak, yeah. Mr. Fancy Pants here. <laughs> All right, so from here we go into the, the new hand tool area he just built this workbench uh, we're actually about to flatten the top on it and do a video on it and a very simple but organized tool wall and I, the way I, the reason I'm saying simple is because some of these holders this is just a board with two offsets on the wall over here and everything's just there's just a gap back there and everything is just sitting in place no individual holders for everything it's just super simple and not over complicated like half of my crap uh, dowels on the wall. Oh, check this out. This is mm -hmm. this is from the woodworking show in Atlanta. I took a mallet and got everybody to sign it. So you got all the creators on there. Who's that Dirista guy? Dirista. Dirista. Yeah, he's some dude. Dirista. <laughs> and then Vance Maker and uh, all kinds of people. Just so cool. Yeah, it's awesome. Anyway, I thought that was really. Neat, and then his fancy pants mallet that he doesn't use for some reason because it's <laughs> really nice. I'm gonna have to make you one that you can actually use. Uh, of course, some other simple holders and such for his scrapers. I like what he did here. So this is a similar setup to mine uh, with the plain shelf, uh, but he put a dowel through the bottom of it for simple storage like these clamps and F-style clamps. Just this isn't the main clamp rack storage area, however, it's the nice, smaller, appropriate size clamps that you typically uh, use handily at a workbench. So I like what he did there. And I can't get over at some of the things that are so simple on this that I overcomplicated. Like I was thinking of a different way to hold my router plane and, and making a specific holder for it and all this. But he just put a dowel in place to stop this from falling off. There's no reason why I can't put a dowel in the wall to hang it vertically. So a lot of neat little ideas. And then moving along, he's got his little uh, computer relaxation station, I guess. Everyone's got one of those. You just come out to the shop and just chill for a little bit. And a uh, display case he made a while ago. This is, I guess you said this is like random household storage or stuff and stuff? Correct. Yeah. Uh, but he's got a nice little setup over here. This is... Um, the, basically the same workbench I made without the cabinet on the bottom. I like the shelf on the bottom. That's that's nice. And then also uh, it's a couple inches taller than mine because you're a tall dude and I'm not. <laughs> um, how tall is this? 37. 37. Yeah, we're about to flatten it, like I said. Uh, Sam Maloof poster. Awesome. He made this frame too, which looks really good. And then moving along, fridge for water. And then something he just made, he just made this like two days ago or a day ago or something like that, right? Correct. Uh, this, this universal clamp rack style that everyone seems to be adopting, which 
I'm going to remake mine and it's gonna look like this. So many people seem to be using this and it works so much better to store the clamps from the wall away rather than left to right like I did. I'm very dissatisfied with my clamp rack and I'll get to all the reasons why when I remake mine, but this is just really nice for the bigger clamps and down here he's just got a uh, piece of PVC for these smaller ones that just hang on it, which is simple and efficient simple and efficient and then um so the main work area here what size garage is this 20 by 22 20 by 22 and then does that include this little bump out right here no it's 20 feet to the door 20 feet to the door this way and then you got this little bump out so it's almost the exact same size as mine almost maybe just a smidgen bigger but you have 10 foot ceilings i have 10 foot ceilings these are eight yes eight foot ceilings and the amount of space back here is ridiculous. Now, of course, I've got a different size outfeed table, but we pretty much have a very similar setup. I've got my miter saw station on this wall, and I've always said now that I've made mine, I should have put it on this wall. Well, he put it on this wall, and it makes so much more sense. And I wish I would have done that. But seeing how much open space he has here, how slightly smaller but still efficient his outfeed table is, Makes me really, really, really want to move some crap around in my shop. Uh, but moving along the wall here, we got some more straight edge stuff, random storage, this little shelf, which he's, you, you moved a couple things around. This used to be over there like last week when I was here. Right. So I moved a little um, out of the way storage and put it out of the way. So small stuff there. And some chargers. Uh, very similar miter saw station setup. Uh, he's got a fancy pants miter saw. And, uh, California air compressor at the bottom. Uh, California air compressor. This thing is so, so quiet. I saw it on Dima's channel. Yeah, Dima, Dima Gamayunov. Yeah, and I decided to pick one up. It's super quiet. Yeah, it it's is. one of my pet peeves. I had a, uh, a pancake compressor. It was just super loud. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's very, very quiet. And um, it's got the integrated, or it's all set up with the air hose here, so you just pull that out and use it. It's all set up, ready to go. And that's the thing, like, I came here last week and we re rearranged some stuff and got everything hooked up to where now everything in the entire shop is, you walk up and you push a button and you use it. So everything's hooked up, ready to go. Uh, so, so a couple different small changes to the station as opposed to the way I have mine. Mine's up against the wall on my left side, so he built a little, like, I guess you could call that like a dishwasher end panel if you're talking kitchen cabinet design. Um, <clears throat> and he did not build the cubbies on the top, which if you have no reason to store stuff on top of the cubbies, then there's no point in the cubbies. So that's a subtle change. Uh, some empty space over here, which I discussed, or I mentioned uh, he might possibly want to do some like lumber storage up there, long-term lumber storage, but we both agree that horizontal storage like this is just a catch-all. And more often than not, you want the stuff that's on bottom. So if possible, vertical storage is, is more ideal, I guess you could say. So <clears throat> we've all got our organizational whatevers, but what are a couple drawers that you, your, your go-to or your favorite drawers? I use this one quite often. Your hardware drawer, see? Yeah, hardware drawer. It's cool to see other people's setups because his hardware drawer is nice, it's organized, all that stuff, but it's not where I put my hardware. My hardware is in these bottom two drawers. Of course, the domino, the domino drawer. <laughs> yeah, my domino drawer is that one right there. And all my sharpening stuff. Sharpening? Yeah. And because of the recent addition of the tool wall, I have lots of empty, empty drawers. Got some empty storage in here, which is always nice because, you know, everyone knows shops evolve. And you just acquire stuff. It's it's crazy how much you acquire stuff. So it won't take long to fill. It yeah, up. it's not gonna take long to fill it up. Um, moving along, we've got a couple jigs stored up on top. And oh, your your uh, HVLP thing. That what is that? Rolex uh, 5500. Yeah. How do you like it? Love it. You love it. Love it. I keep it super clean, like my shop. Keep it super clean. So. I always, I've never, I've never used one of those. I've always had the experience of using like conventional HVLP gravity guns that are air compressor fed. I've never used one of these and one day I want to borrow it and test it out because I've 
people ask me about these all the time, but I don't have any experience, so I don't want to say anything. Obviously, they're probably going to be it's excellent. better at all. Excellent, excellent. What did you do? I'll post the picture on the screen. What did you use to your last one you finished, a like blanket chest or something like that? Yeah, I sprayed the dye with the, uh, the Erlex. Yeah, I sprayed the dye with the Erlex, and I'll post a picture of it in this video. Um, but some other cool little th randomness things that he made. This is actually, is this empty on the bottom? Yeah. Yeah, so he just made this with segments, no turning at all, just segmented and then sanded it smooth on the outside. And it looks like it's an actual turned like little drum or basket or something, but. It's lace wood. Lace wood. Yeah. Mr. Fancy Pants, he uses all the, <laughs> all the nice hardwoods. And this is one of those wine bottle jobs, you know balances like this it's bloodwood and i just put some uh, maple strips in it bloodwood and maple yeah it's wine stuff yeah just random stuff and um gotta have your tunes gotta have your tunes bluetooth speaker so we got some random uh, material storage over here everybody's got a random material storage section like this everyone's got one just a bunch of leftover pine from the uh workbench build from the workbench. Also, like, like Wayne, Wayne, I don't know if you guys know, have noticed, but Wayne uses a lot of nice hardwoods in his stuff, not really much pine like I do. However, the pretty much the entire miter saw station is pine, except for the visual face he used oak. So, inexpensive, cheap pine plywood uh, in the entire miter saw station. So, if you're wondering if you need really fancy. Not really fancy, but if you need if you need like cabinet grade birch plywood or anything like that, you don't. Uh, it's less frustrating if you work with better plywood. However, that's all pine, and most of it's half inch, isn't it? Yes. Yeah, he used most mostly half inch where my my plan calls for three quarter and such. So, hey, save some money. Uh, the drill press. This is a Porter Cable floor standing drill press, and just like me, we've already discussed that <clears throat> the biggest concern with these drill presses is the mess. So what have you got? Have you got anything in mind for? Well, I was thinking about either building a shroud like you were talking about. Shroud around it, yeah. Right, right. Or just making some type of a, a, a dust collection. I think I saw Sean Stone. Didn't he have one? Sean yeah. Stone? I don't recall, to be honest with you. Probably so. Sean did a lot of dust collection stuff. Yeah, I mean, I got the shop back right there, so I could just... You know, Clean it up, yeah. Yeah, I'll, I'll try something clean it up because your shop's never never dirty it's always spotless like this right <laughs> this is as clean as it's ever been clean as it's ever been <laughs> all right so moving on to the middle um we've got a rigid 10 inch table saw and this is equipped with a Incra ls positioner Incra ls positioner now i've never used an Incra anything and i've been messing with this thing and it looks looks pretty darn handy but no experience with it. I'm still going to side with my T-square style fence that I'm always used to. But uh, definitely a, a nifty little setup for precision. He's also got a router, uh, dedicated router. Is there a router in that? Yep. Yeah, dedicated router in this this router lift right here, and an external switch and such. Now this also controls the dust collection. Yeah. So this is a is this an aftermarket switch? Yes. It's, it's an Jessam. Jessam aftermarket switch, typically used for the router. However. The way he's got this island here, which is something that I've wanted to do as well, put my dust collection in the island. Um, instead of controlling the, the router, he uses this to control the, the dust collector because it's, it's kind of buried in there. So instead of reaching over to the back side down there like that to turn the dust collector on, he's got the switch over here. So it, that's a convenient little change or whatever. You recognize this? <laughs> the push stick. <laughs> Just made a push stick. That's nice. I need to. I almost need to remake mine or trim off the bottom of mine. Um, <clears throat> but mine's not all sanded and comfortable and rounded over like this, man. Super fancy. Um, so we got a rigid, not rigid, Rikon bandsaw. What is this? A seven? Fourteen inch. Oh, it's a fourteen inch. And I've got a. Uh... Is it one of those carbide blades. Yeah. It's a uh, resaw king. Resaw king, which you work with a lot of hardwoods, so that makes sense and such. Um, pleased with the bandsaw? Oh yeah, I love it. Love it. I love it. Awesome. So we we like I mentioned earlier, I came last week and we kind of rearranged some stuff based upon what I find to be working in my shop, and uh, 
this used to be, let's see, the table saw used to be over there, band saw used to be over here, planer used to be over there. It used to be a bunch of different islands in this workspace, which did not combine dead space and did not combine waste, uh, uh, usable space, excess space. So putting them all like this kind of uh, makes all of the dead space share itself, which is the reason why we freed up all this other space back here. Um, so the, the theory here is at maximum capacity with the table saw, the band saw is not in the way. And then as you're using the band saw going this way, you still have access, it's shoved up as close as you can to the table saw, but you still have access to use everything and to make a safe cut through the bandsaw. The wheels, the casters on this mobile base face this way, so when you do need to access the door, which isn't often at all, you can just slide it that way very easily and have access to everything you need. In the meantime, everything's nice and compact. You're, kill you're, you're combining dead space, so to the left of the bandsaw, you're not going to be using ever really at all. To the right of the table saw, you're not going to be using hardly at all, so it combines this dead space over here. So that's an efficient use of that little corner. Come to the back side, and we have his jointer sitting out in, in the open. Now, keep in mind that one of the main objectives with all of this was to have pretty much maximum infeed and outfeed at all times for all the tools. So here, nothing is this way obstructing on either direction for the jointer. Nothing is obstructing on either direction for the bandsaw. The table saw, nothing is obstructing on either direction. They're all combined. It, uh, it naturally has this dead cavity space right here, so we put the dust collector, which doesn't obstruct anything at all. Then you come to this side, and we've got the planer, which isn't an infinite amount of infeed. However, what is this, like 10 feet, something like that? Yeah. So you have plenty of space for infeed, and then you're naturally outfeeding right onto the uh, multi-use outfeed table. So one, two, three, four major tools plus a dust collector. Everything's hooked up, ready to go. Efficient use of space. Uh, it's really nice. And this is, what's in this cabinet? Is this a dead cabinet? Just an empty? It is. It's just a, uh, just a stand. Just a full frame. Yeah, just an empty, empty stand, which can be utilized if needed. Uh, however, in this setup, I don't think it is. So we got some cutoff storage down here, and I like the, I like your little bins here. You can pull out the whole bin and sort through it, as opposed to having to dig through an entire massive pile. Uh, integrated power switch right here. So if you're using po uh, hand power tools or something right here, trying to not let this sun kill the exposure. <clears throat> so. By combining all this, what we did is got this massive amount of space. It's like, I don't know, 10 feet this way and 15 feet this way, some crazy number like that. There's plenty of space. And what's your plans for this? I'm gonna build a, uh, about a five foot by five foot, uh, kind of like a Polk workbench. Polk like style yours. assembly table kind of thing? Yeah, smaller. Yeah, just five by five. Just five by five. You're gonna go completely mobile or just something like a stationary floor like it's this? Gonna be stationary stationary yeah so plenty of room for upgrades as far as that goes but I'm just I'm so blown away like our shops are sorry for the shaky hand by the way our shops are pretty much the exact same size pretty much not much difference at all but a just slightly smaller assembly table and he's got all of this other extra space now I originally wanted to put or not originally but looking back on it i should have put my miter saw station on the left side in my garage as well um but man look at all the free space pretty much the same a very similar tool setup and a much more efficient use of space so i'm totally digging this right now me too um upgrades what are you thinking about like lighting anything yeah i need two more um four bulb banks i'm gonna put one above the uh the workbench, and yep. then I'll have one over here so it'll light up the uh, miter saw station as well as the assembly table. Yeah. The one thing I got you on is air conditioning, though. It is so hot. <laughs> 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 He's got a fan over here, doors open, and it's Mississippi summertime, so <laughs> it is toasty. But it's a nice, efficient use of space. Hopefully, you guys got some ideas out of this. Uh, like I said, we're about to flatten this workbench top, so if you want to check out that video, uh, I'll post a link to it as well. Um, and who knows, maybe we'll make a project in here one day or something, but nice, efficient workspace, two car garage, modest setup. Well, actually a pretty nice setup if you ask me. And, uh, 
yeah. It's Wayne Brown. I'll post a link to his Instagram page as well down below. Check it out if you guys uh, follow Instagram. He, he makes a lot of really nice stuff with some uh, nice hardwoods as well. So anyway, thanks for watching. You guys take care and have a good day.